What's going on guys? National Master James Canty III here and today we cover another world champion, the second world champion, Emmanuel Lasker. Let's get right into it guys. So Emmanuel Lasker is the second world champion, held the title for 27 years. I'm 28, basically all my life. He was the world champion. So we're going to look at this one first. This game 37 world championship 1894 guys. Um, well actually this is game 37 in the book, but uh, this is the seventh game of uh, the world championship back in 1894 guys like wow emmanuel lasker versus steinitz we just looked at the steinitz actually video you can check that in the playlist of course we're going to have more world champions and just talking about games and stuff this is fun to uh, analyze classical games guys and when you analyze a classical game it's just like a with a lot of things that you can learn from it so we're going to look at emmanuel lasker today and see what he's done in the past here so we have e4 e5 knight f3 and knight to c6 bishop b5 d6 so you still see this today guys usually you'll see an a6 here but d6 is just as fine it does happen here then after d4 bishop d7 knight to c3 interesting so far and knight g to e7 and this is Steinus's classical defense is what it says in the um in the notes here so knight g to e7 i actually have never faced this one when i used to play to roy lopez but i wouldn't put the knight on c3 either this is a little bit different putting a knight on c3 here i guess just trying to play um more open more open and more active just because we're de developing instead of playing moves like c3 or castling so let's just see actually uh what happens here what's next bishop to e3 and it says in the notes before lasker used to play bishop c4 so backing the bishop up one but in the fifth game actually of this match a uh, world championship E takes d4 happen. Knight takes, knight takes, queen takes, knight c6, queen e3. Uh, and then we have uh, the game move was bishop e6, and then knight d5. Bishop e7, bishop d2. So this is it, like the whole game, or like most of it. Castle, castle, so far so good. I think it's quite equal. Black's definitely developed. White's doing a great job in development too. White just has a little bit more space. Knight e5, bishop b3. Capturing on d5, capture, c6, back up, knight d7. I got the bishops. That uh, feels good as white to have bishops. Rook A to D1, A5. C3, A4. Bishop C2, Rook E8, Queen H3. Knight F8, Bishop E3, and Queen A5, and black obtained a solid position. So that's what happened. This is actually what happened in the fifth game of the World Championship match in 1894 with uh, Steinitz and Lasker here. So instead he actually opted in for bishop e3 as opposed to bishop c4 like he played in game five now after bishop to e3 there's knight to g6 here which h4 could happen in these cases the knight is developing to uh, g6 here f4 is actually a good square to put the knight on bishop e7 and castling is a thing too as well just kind of like uh optimally placing the pieces and seeing what's happening next queen to d2 bishop e7 and then getting out of the way with castles queen side and then a6 from Steinitz. And then bishop e2. So now let's look at this. Like, who do you like here? I think white is just, uh, I like, I prefer white because I'm already castled. I'm already castled. And h4, maybe even g3 to stop knight f4 for kind of like good. I just like the flexible play here. But black can be uh, counterattacking with like b5 and b4 early, maybe a5. You got to be careful. So let's see what happens. Best move, e takes d4, x glamp. And if castle, d takes c5 is very unpleasant. Because if knight takes, knight takes, knight takes, f4. And now we really cook in here. This is going to be a problem. With initiative, says the book, yes. So a6, bishop back to e2. e takes d4. And then knight takes d4, knight takes, queen takes d4. Hitting the g7 pawn. So far, so good. Nothing really dynamic yet. I think the bishop has to come to f6, right? And then it defends g7. It also hits the queen. Uh, bishop f6, correct. Queen d2, bishop e c6. I thought it was bishop e6. So bishop e6 looks good too. Maybe just knight d5. Yeah. So bishop c6 puts the bishop here. I still like white's position here. f3. I mean, we're just going to hold and try to fight this as much as we can. White looks good though. Knight to d5 and then castles by uh, Steinitz here. It says white has merely obtained slightly the freer game from the opening, but suddenly Lasker sharply disrupts the positional balance. So before we look at the move, oh, actually, it's already there. I just looked at the, the recording here on OBS and actually just saw the move. So I didn't want to do that. I wanted to try to figure this out myself. But um, yeah, you, you haven't. If you haven't looked at the move yet, you try to figure this out. What actually are you going to play here? This is a very interesting concept. Something that you can do even in your own games today is G4. That's actually the game from the uh, the move from the game. They have a question mark here, of course, with the next claim. But pawns don't move backwards. It's hard to say whether this aggressive move was made 
with a desire to unsettle to unsettle his tenacious opponent or if it involves some oversight it looks logical to play f3 that's what lasker said and then uh or g3 to follow too as well but f3 and uh um having some sequences like this but he said i guess he just says f3 was good he also said g3 rookie a bishop f3 h2 h4 h5 yeah this is a, a, a easy way to play usually let's just go back here instead of g4 like you've got these four pawns on the side of the board and you have to use them so f3 or even a g3 and f4 like in a yugoslav like you do if you're ever familiar with the yugoslav attack or if you aren't you, you just want to kind of google it maybe but you can you, you can look at the yugoslav attack uh, against the dragon variation or sometimes the hyper accelerated dragon variation where um uh, it's a very dangerous attack f3 g4 h4 stuff like that happens but he played g4 here which uh, does leave holes like even knight h4 which is a weird move to make and actually i think he's in trouble actually that knight takes f6 bishop g5 i think that's winning material especially if queen takes but knight h4 like this just loses right takes takes bishop g5 but the, the key here is that this knight actually is blocking h4 so it's kind of blocking some of our stuff but the knight is kind of looking weird there at the same time so black castles and gets out of the way and then we have g4 and then rook to e8 so he's hitting the e pawn so how do we defend this without looking at what the move is probably f3 probably f3 what about g5 maybe g5 yeah maybe g5 what did he play he played g5 there it is guys yeah g5 why because if bishop here we just go f4 bishop's looking crazy i mean is that a piece it looks like a piece yep it looks like a piece g5 and like a, well rookie eight and then g5 and this bishop's looking kind of crazy so what he did is bishop takes d5 first yeah you got to get rid of something and then queen takes d5 rook to e5 oh that's a good move that's a good move queen d2 and if bishop takes f4 right queen d2 much better was queen takes b7 um, but what's wrong with this move though? Queen to d2. It says bishop to oh something happened. What the I, the intention was this, but apparently that's wrong here. So let's see what happens. Queen takes rook e5. Queen takes b7. Was better. Rook b8 looks scary though. Man, what? Queen takes b7. We gotta see this. Queen takes b7. What if he plays like rook b8 first? Okay, let's so let's turn the engine on because they don't even show that. So let's look at this ourselves. What happens on rook b8? It's not crushing, crushing? Queen a7 and queen takes a6. Well, but let's look at both. If queen a7, I mean, it feels like you, well, I guess you can't sack. You don't have anything to do. But the intention, guys, is like very close. It's almost there. Now, right now, it's losing. It says it's plus five. But this is something to pay attention to because the f, the bishop's open. Double check. Nothing yet, though, right? How do you get out of this? Where do you put your king at? It says king c1. Okay, so what about the check? Oh, he can get away. King to d2, he can get away. Wow. But this is like, with the human eye, this is extremely scary. That's not like what you're trying to do. Queen takes d5, rook e5, queen to d2. And then bishop takes g5. Probably Lasker was hoping for rook takes g5. I mean, oh yeah, he can do that. Intention is here, this. It's right here, guys. Uh, he's losing the queen. Uh, he could have taken with the with the g pawn actually with the with the rook. And if rook takes g five, f four, rook g two, queen e one. When the black rook is off sides. Uh, interesting. Down a pawn, but the black rook is misplaced. Is misplaced. So instead, after queen d two, there was bishop takes g five, f four now, and then it says rook takes e four. Exclaim. F takes g5, rook e, queen e7, bro. Steinitz was nasty, bro. Steinitz was nasty out here, dog. He was always, man, like even if, if you look at the previous, there's only two videos so far in this playlist. We're going to have tons more, guys. But the first video is with William Steinitz, and we saw just attacking chess, nothing less than destroying your opponent kind of chess. And uh, it, it doesn't fail here either, even playing against Lasker here which is uh really strong i mean he sacrificed it got the material right back saying that hey if you move one of the bishops i take the other and i get the extra material in the end here what's the eval says the eval says it's about equal man so i see that bishop f3 i guess rook d to f1 is a question mark best move was bishop f3 
like we just looked at. But he played rook d to f1, rook takes c3, and then bishop c4. So he just wanted to put some pressure here. If I'm going to give the pawn back, I want to get something for it kind of thing. So after bishop to c4, it says two pawns down in a, <laughs> in a difficult, objectively lost position. White tries to create an attack by h2, h4. Oh, man, he's just losing, basically, is what they're saying. And then knight h8. Ooh, typical Steinitz, bro. The commentators admired this eccentric move, although it is apparently not the strongest. Well, I mean, yeah, knight h8. Who does that? I think I have, I did. I have one game ever that I can remember over the board where I played knight h1. I was very nice. I sat it there. I like, I grabbed it and I put it there very nicely. Made sure I put it right in the center of the square. It was like amazing because I was like, ooh, knight h1. I still ended up winning that game, but it was like, it was very nice to put a knight on h1. Now here, putting a knight on h8 though, trying to get this out is going to be a huge hassle here. You have to untangle. The problem about this is usually I tell students, like, if you're going to put a knight on the edge, you need to get them back to the center within like a move or two. Here, I mean, man, he's far from the center. I mean, he had two moves, knight g6, knight e5. But uh, this pressure is not going anywhere anytime soon, which means the knight's not going anywhere anytime soon. So there's pros and cons to it. Looks cool, and it defends, but also it's not there anymore. So you're kind of playing almost down a piece. H4 and then C6. Oh, trying to cut him off and play D5. And then G6. Wow, that's strong. Oh, I've seen this concept before. I've seen this concept before. If H takes G6, then you play H5. That's pretty cool. And of course, he can't take with the knight. Obvious reasons, guys, because uh, it's, it's hanging. It's defending F7. That's very nice. Wow, C6, G6. I've seen this concept before. And then X clam move after D5, shutting it down. Hey, shut down the diagonal anyway. We don't care what you take. G takes H7, King takes. Bishop D3, King G8. Okay, so from an attacking standpoint, three, six, so yeah, we're still down two pawns here. Three, six, yeah, we down two pawns, but we got open lines and diagonals and an H pawn. We have a lot to play for. Let's see what the eval thinks. Wow, equal, guys. I can't make this up. It is right here. I mean, yeah, now they prefer black by not even half a pawn here. Not even half a pawn. And we up two pawns with black here, guys. That's why a lot a lot has to do with uh, Gary Gary Kasparov says um what is it initiative over or activity actually activity over material that's what he says the activity part how active are your pieces and if your your pieces are extremely active it doesn't matter what kind of material you have sometimes you gotta take that with a grain of salt don't be like trying to give up all your pieces and be like I'm active though I'm active give up all my pieces that's what Gary said I'm active that's not right but here um. This makes sense. He's down two pawns, but he's active. And this guy has not moved. Like, the rook on a8 is still chilling over here. And he hasn't moved. And he's not helping. He can't go rook f8, but sometimes it might be too late. Let's see what happened. Now, after king g8, by Steinitz standards, the position is won. But Lasker continues fighting. h5, rook e8, h6. g6, and then h7, king g7, and then king b1. And they put, like, a exclam kind of, but with a question mark here. In this game, there's something of a towel element. White's attack is rather abstract, but it will not come to an end. All time, all the time, some threats arise. It is kind of a lingering conversation, which there is also after Queen H2. But Queen H2 runs in the rookie one, though. Oh, no, he's talking about if instead of King B1. All right, let's see what happened. Queen E5 and A3. Lasker's two last two quiet moves were completely inexplicable to his contemporaries. How can you play this way when you're two pawns down? I know. I understand. I mean, he's fighting. He's really fighting, bro. You have two, like, he's down two pawns here. But you got play. It's not over, right? Bishop's aiming over here. This rook's hitting this. This rook's defending. I mean, queen h6 is almost there. Almost. So, like, you got to keep playing here. Like, you can't, you can't give this up. You can't. So c5 happens. c4 is going to be deadly. I mean, that's going to be deadly. Okay, before we look at the next move, like, what do you even do here? c4 is going to shut everything I own down. So we need to do something right now. Uh, bishop takes g6. Sack the whole house? You can't get to h6 yet. Oh, Rick f3. Nah, that's stupid. Ooh, I don't like that move. I don't like that. Okay, what did he do here? 
very strong with rookie six. Yeah, so queen f2 was the best. This is what he played, actually. Is he going to sack? Because, like, what happens on c4? Okay, so they don't actually show it here. Yeah, they don't even say it. So he played f6, but I want to know what happens on c4. I was thinking, does it have something to... No, but you can't sack. It doesn't work. The rook still defends. So what's the best move? Oh, just playing queen h4, trying to get to h6, but it's still equal after this. Okay, so instead of c4, he actually played queen f2, c5, queen f2, and then f6, actually, sorry, f6. Right? Oh, sorry, queen f2, that did happen. Oh, we just missed the move here. Okay, so queen f2, c4 did happen, and then queen h4. Now f6. According to Shigorin, king f8 was completely safe. F6 does weaken the pawns around this king, though. So is there any combat of moves here, guys? Something strong. Let's think. Let's think here. We always look at our forcing moves first. Bishop takes G6. So does it work? If bishop takes, knight takes. I don't see enough yet. You're queening. He just takes the rook. Doesn't work. You do have queen H6, though. So wait, wait, wait. let's do this again, then. Bishop takes G6. Yeah, it's not going to work. It's not going to work. Knight takes, queen H6, king F7. Rook g1, I don't think it works. All right, let's see what he did. Let's see what he did here. Bishop f5, okay. A key moment to keep his... Oh, wow. Whoa, Bishop f5. Whoa, big fella, I see you. So what if we just take it? You got to go with what if he just takes it, right? We have to see it. Okay, so let's see what the note. A key moment to keep his attack alive. Lasker now also gives up a piece. He sub subly, uh, subtly... Since that the misplaced black king and the sleeping knight on h8 will promise white excellent compensation after g takes f5 here uh, Here queen check king e7 rook takes f5 Etc. So how would black play even a powerful computer required a considerable amount of, a considerable amount of time to understand this intricate Position yeah, that's very interesting especially with this pawn on h7 This is what I got nasty guys And if you look at it, it is equal here and if you let the engine sit, it's probably going to favor white eventually. I mean, we'll see. But like, like they just said here, it's going to be even hard for the engine to figure out this. And again, it's about activity over material, guys. Activity. If you can be active, this is why sacrifices work. I can't wait to get to the Tau chapters. That's my favorite player. Oh, my goodness. We might do just a playlist on Tau. But, of course, um, people do this all the time. Just material was nothing as long as we get these active pieces. And that's what you see here in very delicate style that was pretty sweet so bishop at five he was like i'm not taking that you know what i'm just not gonna take that so he played king f7 not an easy choice later those researching the games of steinus and lasker suggested two ways to win dang queen g3 was one of them and after queen h6 here here rookie one let's just look at this briefly bishop d7 they said this looks unclear uh oof very unclear. What is going on here? What is this position? They prefer white by a lot. But, I mean, that's the engine. Like, there's pawns. There's double rooks. I mean, there's two rooks. Like, it's just a lot going on. So, he went king f7. And then we have rook h to g1. Again, so what happens on takes this time? Oh, just probably the same moves, right? Maybe a little different, though. Maybe a little different. Okay. He does take it. Here it is. Here is the decisive take. Suicidal is what they say. Excuse me. Explained by the commentators, maintaining that there, maintaining that there was nothing threatening black, and recommending the winning b5 was just winning because he was like, "What do you do?" Basically saying like, "What if I don't take it? If I don't take it, can I sack and play h8?" But that wouldn't be enough. I'll be down too much material still. See, he took it. He took. He went for it. Queen h5, king e7. Rook g8, absolutely. Now I'm hitting the rook and maybe the knight in some cases. King d6, this was bad apparently, but this really would would uh, this, but this really would seem to be a mistake. Safer was king d7. All right, so why is this a mistake? What's the problem? Rook takes e8, queen f7, rook takes f5. Let's look at the moves here, folks. Let's see if we can figure this out ourselves. Uh, rook takes f5 looks really good. It looks really good, by the way. So what what is it? And it, uh, it that's actually the move. Rook takes f5, threatening the rook that's conf that's defended by the queen. The queen is actually overloaded, defending the d5 pawn and the pawn, the rook on e8. So rook takes f5 makes a lot of sense. And then after queen e6, okay, so maybe take the rook on e8, or do we take on d5? 
Yeah, probably not on d5. It should be take on e8 first. That is correct. And then takes, and then rook takes f6. I forgot that was hanging, actually. Rook takes f6, king c5. Whoa, king is in the middle of the street. And this is where you really have to pay attention here because this king is literally in the middle of the street here. b4 looks like a move, but uh, he can just opposite. I don't have anything after b4. And my king's kind of safe on a2 if he checks me. So I'll probably just make a queen move somewhere. And that's what he did. He played queen h6. Absolutely. Just make a queen move. Like, you don't have any. Black doesn't have a lot here. Rookie 7. And it says how hard it was for Steinus to defend. Later, they uh, Shigorin actually recommended queen e7 here. Queen e7. But a uh, lot, of, lot of theory there. A lot of theory. But after rookie 7, queen h2. Brilliant game, actually. It says brilliant. Brilliant move, and after queen h2, queen to d7. So what was the threat? Wait, what was the threat? Oh, queen d6 mates in a few. Yeah, mate in a few. So something like, I don't know, what what would you do? Like, how would you mess this up? Queen c8, just random move, check. Oh, but he can go here, though. Oh, there's like mating threats. Oh, the rook's hanging. Yeah, this is ugly. What do you actually do? Ricky 7, he backed the queen up. You have to find a move. Queen d6 is a big boy threat, it looks like. Queen f2 might be a threat too. But queen h6, rookie 7. Uh, queen h6, rookie 7, queen h2, yes. And then queen to d7. Okay, so no checks. Queen g1, or no checks uh, on d6. Queen g1. d4. It says queen takes f5. Oh, queen g5 first. Queen here. Okay, this got to be wrong. Rook f5. That wins. Does that not win on the spot? Did he not have another move? I don't think he had another move. Let's go back. Oh, he don't. He does not have another move. Oh, my goodness. So he just blundered this. King b5. Oh, my goodness. This is nasty. You can't even block. King b5, check, and mate, bro. Dang. That told you that knight on h8, guys. I'm won many games, guys. I remember one game in particular. Agassi in it. It's in, um, what, what? Where is that? I have analysis for something. It's somewhere on a YouTube channel, but it is about um I played a game against a guy named Agassi in it. He was like 23 and some change, 2300 and some change. And he was uh Yeah, he had a he had a knight on e8, I think. And he blocked his connection between the rooks. And I remember saying to myself, This is going to be a problem long term for you. So I need to press you now. Because if you try to use this piece later. I'll be like, it's going to take too long. And that's exactly what happened here. His king in the middle of the street. And he if, he, if this would be a bishop, if this was really any other piece, this would be completely winning. But because it's a knight, it's a short range piece. And it's only doing nothing but defending the pawn. Stopping the pawn here, he's in a lot of trouble here. And this makes a lot of sense. Queen h2, he's just pressing him, giving him no time to breathe. And then push, check, and then rook f5, hit that man with a move. And this is a wrap. Queen takes f5. Queen takes, king d6, queen f6, game over. Lights out. The rook will be hanging if you move the king to the wrong square. And if you block with the rook or move the king, I'm going to take the knight. And then I'm going to queen afterwards. That was crazy. Insane game there. That was really cool by uh, Lasker playing white and Steinitz playing with the black pieces, guys. I mean, that was pretty cool. So, all right, this was to get today's game. Guys, we're going to go over another one tomorrow from a different world champion but the, the app i'm using is actually forward chess i'll give you guys a link to that for free you can use this app on the desktop and grab some books from it and stuff like that too so um yeah guys this was a lasker versus steinitz right here lasker versus steinitz i have a playlist guys we're going to do every world champion we're going to check out a game or two of each one lasker versus steinitz here world championship in 1894 this was the seventh game guys and that's it thank you so much for watching this video guys i'm national master james canty the third hit the like button subscribe share this video put comments under the video really appreciate you guys check out the playlist i put it put together for you guys this one in particular too will be under the world champions playlist guys you can just click like right above and get the uh, playlist for that guys check the links out in the description and i appreciate you guys watching and i'll see you on the next video